الحمد للہ وسلاۃ وسلام علی رسول اللہ وعلیٰ علی وصاب اجمعین اما آباد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہن لباس القم ونت الباس الحن رب شلی صدری ویس علی عمری واہل العدت مل سان یف کو کولی ویلکم آل آف یو ود اسلام گریٹنگز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. I welcome you to the special program of Better Half or Bitter Half. And in this program, you're most welcome to ask any questions related to marriage, how to conduct a nikah, regarding how married life should be led. You can ask any questions that you'd like to know before you say, I do before you say kabool hai, before you say I accept it, or any questions related to anything that related to your life after you say I do, after you say kabool hai, after you say I accept it. You're most welcome to ask any questions regarding marriage. In short, you're most welcome to ask any questions so that after you say I do, you should have a successful wedlock and not a padlock. So the program will start better half or better half. Bedlock or padlock? Yeah. Any other sister has any questions? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is it encouraged to marry within the same community like Kokneys marry only Kokneys? Sister has a question that is it encouraged for a girl or a boy to marry within the same community like Kokney marrying Kokney or Mehman marrying Mehman? We only got stuck to Kokney because then I'm a Kokney. So it can go Sheikh marrying a Sheikh or a Sayyid marrying a Sayyid. So do you the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? It's preferable to marry the same type of people, same category, whether it may be in category in terms of ethnicity, whether it may be in terms of economic status, whether it be in terms of community, because the compatibility is there. Because the Kokni have a different style of living, the Mehman have a different style of living, the Keralite may have a different style of living, the person, UK American person have a different style of living, the European may have. So, it's easy to gel. So it is preferable, but not a fard. Similarly, imagine an African marrying a European. It can go well, not it's not possible. It's possible, but the chances of compatibility is less. Similarly, a Chinese coming and marrying someone from Kerala, not that it's not possible, it's possible, but if you want to break this barrier for a cause, for example, I'm finding a more virtuous non-Kokni, then I prefer marrying a non-Kokni than marrying a Kokni. For in my case, I could not leave us at Kokni, I could not get a girl from Bombay who I wanted a virtuous, so I had to go to Pune. I had to travel 160 miles. So I not only left the community, I left the city also. So here, the reason to marry was virtue. So if virtue is the criteria, if you break these barriers of economic status, of nobility, of community, of ethnicity, there's no problem. Otherwise, generally, if exactly same, same virtues, who is from your community, not from your community, preferable, same virtues from your community. Same virtues who's rich and who's poor, and if you're rich, then same virtues who's rich is preferable. But if you find that one person more virtuous and out of the community is preferable, that one person is more important than matching your community or matching your ethnicity or matching your economic status. But if the virtue is not the criteria, otherwise marrying in the same level is preferable so that life becomes easier. So when you have a choice to choose the easy part, it's preferable to choose the easy part than the difficult. But that does not mean, because normally in Indian culture, it's very common. Kokni should marry a Kokni, 99%. Mehman should marry Mehman. A Kailite Malayali should marry a Malayali. And that's the reason, you know, they look for this criteria more important than virtue. Yes, I want virtue, but should be a Kokni. I want a virtuous girl, but should be a Mehman. So this is just for saying they're more looking for their community rather than virtue. So virtue should be given the most important. Hope that answers the question. Are there any other questions? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Are the parents allowed to forcefully marry their daughter to whom she does not like? This is the question that, does Islam permit the parents to force the daughter to marry someone who they want her to marry, but the daughter does not want? 
in Islam, forcing anyone to marry is not permissible. The permission or the agreement of both would be husband and wife is very important. Both husband and wife, would be husband and wife, should agree to get married. Then only can the nikah solemnize. Then only can the marriage solemnize. But natural. The parents can guide the children, guide the daughter, give advice, give suggestions. It is good. And normally the parents give good suggestions. But if the girl feels that the parents are not suggesting a right life partner, and she wants a more Islamic life partner, or if the parents say marry Islamic life partner, and the girl says, no, that I don't want to marry Islamic, I want to marry a rich and handsome man rather than Islamic man. So then I feel that the parents are right. And in this case, the parents will get sawab that they are forcing the daughter to be on the straight path. But if the girl feels that the parents want a handsome man and a rich man, but she wants a pious man, a pious husband, so in this case, she's right. So it depends upon who is more on the Quran and Sunnah. But generally, a father or a mother cannot force the daughter to marry someone who she does not like. Because the hadith mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, poem number 7, in the book of Nikah, chapter number 69, Hadith number 649, that once a lady by the name of Khansa bin the Khadim al Ansariya approached the Prophet and said, My father has forced me to marry a man who I don't like. And the Prophet, he nullified the marriage. So, based on this, it's clear that the permission and the agreement of both would be husband and wife is equally important. Hope that answers the question. Any sisters have any questions? I'll come back to you. Any sisters have any questions? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Are marriages between cousins encouraged as scientifically it's proved that the children of the uh, couples, they have genetic defects? Sister has the question that marrying among first cousins, they have proven it, it causes genetic problems. What she is referring to is consanguineous marriages. That in consanguineous marriages where the close blood relatives, cousins marry. As far as the Quran is concerned, Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 23, 24, 25, it gives the people who you cannot marry. The Quran says you cannot marry your mother. You cannot marry the woman who your father has married. You cannot marry the sister of your father. You cannot marry the sister of your mother. You cannot marry your own sister. You cannot marry your daughter. And the list is given. But in this list, the first cousin aren't mentioned. So based on this verse of the Quran, among the prohibited marriages, the Quran does not prohibit you to marry your first cousins. But direct blood relations, the Quran prohibits. Now today's scientific research says that if you marry your blood relation, direct blood relation, brother and sister, mother and son, father and daughter, then there are high chances, very high chances of having genetic problems. Furthermore, even if you marry among the first cousins, the chances are there, but the chances are less. Even if you marry someone who's unknown to you, yet the chances are there, but it is very negligible. But if you marry amongst the first cousin, the chances are not the same as you marry your direct blood relationship, brother and sister. But if you marry the first cousin, chances are more than marrying an unknown person. But compared to direct blood, brother and sister, it is negligible. What the scientific research says today, that continuously if you marry, Amongst the cousins, the mother and father are cousins, their children marry their cousins, their children marry their cousins. This is common in some of the communities. Like if you go to Tamil Nadu, there are some communities which have a concept of only marrying amongst their cousins. So then generation after generation, if you do, there are high chances of having these genetic problems. Otherwise, normally, once if you marry or twice, it is negligible. Continuously, so it's more cultural based rather than Islam. And it's not a sunnah in Islam to marry your first cousin. It is mubah. It's optional. And since marrying once, once only, has hardly any negligible impact. But continuously, generation after generation, generation after generation, there's a problem. And there is a hadith which was quoted by Ahmad Sakhar. He said that, one hadith he quoted, that the Prophet has not encouraged marrying first cousin for generation after generation. Hope that answers the question. Any other sisters have any questions? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is there more reward and blessing to arrange for nikah on Fridays? Is there more reward and blessing, blessing. When, when you arrange the nikah on Fridays? Fridays, yes. As far as my knowledge goes, I don't know of any verse in the Quran. I don't know of any hadith which says that when you marry 
on Friday you get more reward. You get, I don't know of any hadith. I don't know of any Quranic verse. But natural, but it's permissible. It's not haram also to get married on a Friday. I feel it's mubah. You can get married on Friday. Friday is the weekly Eid as we say. So no problem if you choose a Friday. But there's no sunnah of the Prophet that is recommended that you marry on a Friday. But Friday is the weekly Eid. If you get married, there's no problem at all. It's good, alhamdulillah. But there is no particular hadith or a Quranic verse saying that it's preferable or you get more reward. Hope that answers the question. Any other sisters have any questions? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as The Prophet salam, has mentioned that majority in the hellfire will be women because they are uh, ungrateful to their husbands. But today we see that most of the men are committing so many crimes. I mean, rapes and um, murders and so many other crimes. So then, please explain. Yeah, even alcohol. Please explain. This has a question that the Prophet said that majority of the people in hell would be women. And one of the reasons is that they're ungrateful to their husbands. Sister has the question that today you find men committing murder, committing rape, having alcohol. So what about them? If you analyze sister today in the world, as I mentioned in my earlier answer on polygyny, that there are more women in the world than men. Even if you take for granted, or just as a normal mathematical equation, that equal percentage of men will go to hell as compared to the women, an equal percentage of men and women would go to heaven, an equal percentage to hell. Because women are more in this world, in hell also they'll be more. But that means in heaven they'll be more, inshallah. You know, because, again, there's another hadith which the Prophet said, that for every man, there'll be multiple hood. So in that logical also equation, the women would be more in heaven also. So don't get so much dejected. Look at the better side of it. And one of the reasons that the Prophet said women would go to hell, one of the major reasons is that because they are ungrateful to their husbands. What is the major reason that men will go is not mentioned. Fine, it may be murder, I don't know, but I doubt it will be murder. All the men aren't committing murder. So that doesn't mean that men will not go to hell. But one of the major reasons why women will go to hell is because they are ungrateful to their husbands. And that you see nowadays, you do find women try to be independent, they try to be, you know, because they're going away from Quran and Sunnah. So the hadith is correct, but that does not mean that men will not go to hell and the women will not be in majority in the heaven. Hope that answers the question. Inshallah, we'll be continuing the session after a short break. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the program. Better half or better half? Wedlock or padlock? And we'll continue with the question after session related to marriage. If a husband is irresponsible and does not take care of the family and of the needs of the family, and he also does not provide education for the children, in such a situation, what should a wife do? If the husband does not take care of the family, does not look after, does not give the rights, the economic rights, does not take care of the children. So in this case, what should the wife do? The wife should try and convince the husband to look after the family. That's the first thing. Because she's the Mosena, she's the fortress against the devil. And there's a normal problem that we have normally, that the wives keep on complaining about the husband, and the husband keeps on complaining about the wife. And this is a common thing everywhere. It is more of a relationship of hand and glove, as I mentioned. So maybe the wife should have an introspection that maybe if she's more close to the husband, if she's more loving to the husband, maybe the husband will take more care. So many a time, tali dua se bachti hai. You clap with two hands, you can't clap with one hand. But normally everyone points the finger at others. When they point the finger at others, they fail to realize three fingers are pointing to themselves. So it's not always black and white. Husband and fault, wife and fault. Many a time it's the fault of both. When a problem arises in a family, it's many a time the problem between both. And even if one of them is Islamic and follows the Quran and Sunnah and has sabr, inshallah most of the problems will be solved. Problem is there, that means both are not following Quran and Sunnah properly. If both of them have sabr, both of them follow Quran and Sunnah, either they change the other spouse and they prevent any problem taking place. When such a situation, the wife should try and counsel the husband, be good to him. But if he continues, then she 
should try and help the husband look after the family. It's not bad. And depending upon how much is he not giving the rights, is he torturing the wife, is he beating the wife, depending on the extent where she cannot bear, then she takes the decision whether she continues or she parts. That's her decision. Hope that answers the question. Are there any brothers have any questions? Mashallah, uh, I want to say one thing that, uh, Alhamdulillah, the effect of this program has already started. Shams is telling me that he wants to get married. Mashallah, very good, Alhamdulillah. Uh, my question is that, uh, as Arshi said, so that you there have are... a virtuous bachelor. Are you earning more than 4,000 rupees? Yeah. Oh, mashallah, good. <laughs> as uh, Brother Arshi said, that uh, there are uh, some youngsters who, uh, because of uh, their career, they reject marriages. Uh, I want to ask that there are some women who delay their motherhood because of their careers, although it may be Islamic, they may, they may be want to be adaya or whatsoever it may be, but uh, they delay their motherhood. So is this permissible in Islam? Before I answer your question, I'd like to ask you that, uh, has this program had an effect on you? It had an effect on your person sitting next to you, but on you, did it have an effect? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. When are you getting married? Inshallah. How soon? After I consulted with you. After? Inshallah. After you consult with me? <laughs> yeah. My consultation as soon as possible. Do what if possible. I don't do what to only Next month. Next year. Next year? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the problem. You say you consult me, and then I give you advice and you delay it. So if you get the good wife, then why not next month? If not, then next Inshallah. Month. Inshallah. Inshallah. Fine. That's good. Uh, as far as coming to your question, that the earlier question was that people want to delay marriage because they want to make a career, etc. But some of the ladies want to delay their motherhood. They don't want to give birth to a child because they want to maintain the career, etc. Is it correct? I feel this is totally wrong. Why? Because the amount of sawab that a lady gets by being a mother is phenomenal. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in the hadith of Sahih Bukhari, from number 8, in the book of Adab, chapter number 2, hadith number 2, a person came to the Prophet and asked him, that who deserves the maximum love and companionship in this world? The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked after that too. The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked after that too. Again, the Prophet said, your mother. The man asked after that too. Then the Prophet said, your father. That means three-fourths, 75% of the love and companionship goes to the mother. 25%, one-fourth goes to the father. In short, the mother gets the gold medal. She gets the silver medal as well as the bronze medal. The father has to be satisfied with the mere consolation prize. So the amount of respect, the amount of sawab, the blessings that a woman gets in becoming a mother is phenomenal. Nine months that your mother has borne you in the womb, even if you give a mountain of gold, you cannot compensate. Even if you give the wealth of this world, you cannot compensate. So now if someone wants to sacrifice the motherhood for earning maybe a few dollars more or a few thousand dollars more, I feel she is a very poor businesswoman. A good businesswoman will say that fine, this she is losing more. To earn a little bit, she's losing more. So I disagree with the concept of delaying motherhood, either for having a better education or a better career, etc. I feel she should marry, she should have children, and then whatever happens, it should continue in that same process of life. Hope that answers the question. Any sisters have any questions? Uh, like brother mentioned about the guys having the problem of career. Boys. No, so then what about, I mean, then we should leave our career. What about us? I mean, we won't be able to manage pregnancy as well as continuing with education. I mean, at least we need to complete our graduation and then go in for marriage. Sister has the question, then what about a career? If we marry, we cannot continue a graduation and a career. What about a career is gone? Sister, what is the definition of career? What do you mean by career? What is the definition of career? Education, at least minimum education. I am asking, what is the definition of career? I don't know the exact definition. So what do you feel is career? Getting educated to the minimum standards. So that is education. Get a job. Career first, then get a job. Get a job. So career means get a job. No, no, getting educated so that so you can get education. the job which you want. That's education. Talking about job or talking about career? I'm talking about education to get a job. Okay, but <laughs> right. not, this doesn't apply to women. I'm not talking about getting educated if you want to go in for Islamic work. So minimum education which you Fine. require. Fine, if you are doing education for a job, then you need not educate yourself because according to Islam, as I mentioned earlier, the financial burden is on the shoulders of the man. 
a woman need not worry about her lodging, boarding, clothing. She's financially secured. Before she's married the duty of the father and the brother, after she's married the duty of the husband and the son to look after lodging, boarding, clothing, all aspects. So if education is for job, forget about it. But that does not mean a woman should not be educated because education is also for being a good mother. Education can also help in the field of Islam or the field of Dawa. But what I told you, that a person can be a graduate in, in the early 20s. So as I said, if a person wants to marry in the late teens, no one can stop her. But at least in the early 20s, you should marry. And surely you finish your graduation in the early 20s. I'm not saying that stop. But post-graduation, fine, may be a problem. You do your post-graduation maybe in 22 years, 23 years. Post-graduation can yet be done after marrying. The pregnancy, if it comes in the way, you do it the next year. What's the problem? Do you have to go for a job? For a man, fine, he'll think, if I lose one year, I lose one year's salary. For the woman, instead of one year, she can take two years. If it is a two years course and pregnancy takes place, she can take three years, she can take four years, she can do correspondence course, no problem at all. So marriage never is a hurdle. But the minimum what you're talking about, graduation is easily possible before the early 20s. As far as career, fine. There are some ladies who want to do career, want to do modeling, want to do dancing, so surely marriage will come in the way. And this, all these careers are haram. Modeling, dancing, aerostasis, exploiting the body of the woman. But natural. As far as the other jobs, as I said, financially a woman is secured. So again, the education will not generally come in between her marriage. It will not. Further studies, you can do post-graduation, super speciality, you can study till the age of 40 or so, no problem. Do you mean to say you're not married till the age of 40? So I feel marriage is never a hindrance in case of education, whether it's a girl or a boy. Neither career is. I feel if you marry early, it's preferable so that you start enjoying life more, you start earning more sawab, and half your deen is complete earlier. So if half your deen is complete, you start getting more sawab. Now you say you want to start half your deen at the age of 30. Why not start at the age of 20? So imagine, sure you realize that if you marry early, you have more chances of getting sawab earlier. So you're losing. I don't know how long will you live. You don't know if at the age of 25 or not. So therefore, earlier the marriage, the better. If you have the means, it's preferable. And it will let you lead a more Islamically aligned life. Hope that answers the question. So all those are not married have decided to get married. And all those already married decided to be a better husband and a better wife, inshallah. Inshallah, we end the session and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he guide us in leading a life and coming closer to Quran and Sunnah.